of the glory, of the dominion, of the majesty, of a son of God now. I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. I do what the word says I can do. Amen. Today I'm talking about receiving answers to prayer. Receiving answers to prayer. Please let's go to John chapter 16. Verse 25. Jesus says, verse 26. He says, then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you. Because you love me. And believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world. And now I will leave and return to the Father. There are many scriptures that tell us that if we ask, we will receive. The Bible says, even as they are praying, I will answer them. Even before they pray, I will answer them. That's what the Bible says. He says, anything you ask for, in my name, I will give it to you. But how come? So many people ask, but they don't receive. Some people are, I've, have even stopped praying. Some people just pray just for the sake of praying. But they don't pray for results. You know, I ask God for many things. But one particular one, I asked him for an aeroplane. In two weeks, I met a man. He says, I have two aeroplanes. And I want to give you one. And he gave me when he left. And I gave it away. as my first fruit. But that's supernatural. You don't meet people like that who say, get no focus for fun. I mean, I've asked God for cars. One month I said, give me five cars in this month. I said this month, give me five cars. And I was given how many cars? Five. He will do more than you ask. You see, so the problem is not God the giver. He loves to give. If he gave us his son, what will he not give us? God has already given you the best. So these things are minor. He gave us himself. He gave us his son. He gave us his spirit. He lives inside of us. He gave us his kingdom. He lifted us up and put us at his right hand. The highest promotion. What will God not give us? Nothing. If he gave us his son, the Bible says, will he not freely give you everything else? So the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. So you do not have things because you did not ask for them. Some of you, most of you, if you want a house, if you want a house, the first thing you think about is a loan. I'm not saying you've done wrong. But you see, some people don't even try asking. If you want a car, first thing you think about, loan. Bond. I'm going to pay for the next five years. Why don't you try, at least just try asking? You see, that's why the Bible says you have not because you ask not. He said, ask so that your joy will be complete. Really? Ask God for a good husband. You're not going to live the rest of your life with somebody fair. 
Ask for the best. Amen. God can give you. So I want us all to agree that God is not the problem. The problem is not the giver. The problem is the receiver. Many of you have prayed and asked for things. Your answers are hanging over your head in the realm of the spirit. But they are not coming in the physical. When you ask God, he said, but I gave you that five years ago. But God, I still don't have it. Why? You don't know how to receive. That is what we want to talk about. How to receive answers from God. It's a good life when you just ask God who is all powerful for things. Just say, God, I need money tomorrow. Suddenly, money comes in from God. It's a good life, ne? For some people, it's, it sounds unreal. But it's real. I've come to a place where I needed about 250,000 the following day. Just the following day. I need 250. And I don't have anything today. It has happened. And what do I do? I pray. Even in December, I had so many things I had to pay. And now it was month end. And I had a lot of bills. And I had 2,000 rand in my account. What did I do? I remembered the covenant. I remember the covenant. Ask. You shall receive. So I prayed. Said, Lord, I thank you. Because you've met my needs. Suddenly. One lady kept phoning me. Men of God, I have to see you. She was chasing me. I said, I'll be in Pretoria. She came here. I forgot her. Went back to my place. After some hours, men of God, I'm still waiting. Men of God, I'm at home. She said, fine, I'll take the train and come to your home. She came to my place. Just to give me money. Hey, and clothes. The same day, one man gave me 60,000 in my account. Same day, money was just coming in. Why? I asked. So God will speak to his people. They will not sleep. They will chase you to bring answers. Anything, God will use people to bring it. You see, God is, a, God is spirit. He doesn't live in, he's not physical like me. And so when you ask for something physical, like say, God, give me a car, it's not just going to fall down. It will push someone. To go and buy you a car or, you a car. or, or somehow give you money to buy the car. Answers can come in different ways. I'm not against loans. God has given me 47 cars in this way. But I gave away, I'm left with only two cars now. The rest I gave away. But I ask, even now I'm, I asked him for new cars. Now. <laughs> Say, yeah, no, now God, I'm asking for new cars, brand new cars. Some people don't even think like that. But just, they just think, no, we have to get a loan. <laughs> you, you see why the Bible says you do not have because you do not ask. Have you really tried asking God? Ask and you will receive. 
You must be bold in asking God. You know, one day I said in church, I said, I'm going to ask God to fill your teeth with gold. There were a lot of people. So I said, God, fill their teeth with gold. First I said, check yourselves so that they will see there is nothing. Then I prayed, fill them with gold, Lord. I said, right now, your teeth are filled with gold. Because when you ask, you must thank God for the answer before you see it. So I said, your teeth are filled with gold. Now. 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 Just actions of faith. Then I said, guys, check yourselves. Three people suddenly had gold teeth. Supernatural. God <laughs> if you are bold enough to ask him, he will how, do it. How, so let's look at how to receive. How many of you want to know how to receive? Right. First of all, you must know God can, God, you're asking for a promotion. God can give you a promotion easily. Easy. Me. The reason why I act in confidence is because I pray for things. I ask God for stuff. Right now I say, God, I'm asking you for this to do this. Then I just take actions of faith. The first step of receiving from God is to believe what the word says. If God says this is yours, like health, wealth, victory, dominion. That's what the Bible says. You must believe that. The Bible says, if you ask anything according to his will, he will give it to you. So it is the will of God for you to prosper in life, for you to move forward. God does not want you stagnant. He doesn't want you miserable. He wants you to be happy in life. He wants you to fulfill your purpose. Right? How many of you cannot say I'm very happy in life? Just lift up your hands. Right, there are some help. hands there. Why? Just stay long enough in church, it will change. Amen? Amen. The Lord wants you to be a happy child. You have a father. You're not an orphan. But how many are really taking God as their father? So believe what God says. If you believe what the Bible says, at least you've put on the first step. Some people don't even believe. The Bible says you have victory over the devil. God says I've given you victory over the devil, over his kingdom, over witchcraft. Some people are still talking about being bewitched. But if you are born again, you cannot be bewitched. They can try to bewitch you. But the Bible says no weapon form against you will prosper. But you must believe what the Bible says. Some people, things are happening in their lives because they don't really believe. You hear from what they are saying. I'm bewitched. But the Bible says you are blessed. You cannot be cursed. So why do you say you are cursed? It shows that you don't believe what God says. You must believe what God says about you. You are what God says you are. Not what you see with your eyes. When you look at yourself, you might see yourself as somebody small. But God says you are great in my sight. So you must speak like God. The word of God is the mirror. It shows you who you really are in the spirit. This, what's your name, sir? Eh? Zemol. Zebulon. What, what language is that? 
Oh, it's a biblical day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Zebulon. How about you? Your name is prophetic. Let me do. What's your name, sir? Huh? David. But your names are all prophetic. But fine. When you talk about David or maybe Tabo, that is the name of your house. Right? The real you is a spirit being. And your name there's a spiritual name that God has given you. The time when God gave birth to you he gave you a name. So the Bible is a mirror that shows you who you really are. So when you read the Bible, you see that I'm a new creation. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I have authority in Christ Jesus. I've been lifted up with Christ. I am blessed in everything I do. My life is moving forward. That's what the Bible says about you. So, for you to receive answers to prayer, you must believe what the Bible says. How many of you believe what the Bible says? Fine. So, if you believe the Bible, that is good, but it's not complete. You have to speak. Some people don't understand. It's very, very important. You have to speak with your mouth. If you believe what God says in your heart, you receive it in the spirit realm. But if you speak it with your mouth, you receive it in the physical realm. Are we together? So if you believe that you are healed, you receive healing in the spirit realm. But you are still sick in the physical but when you start speaking with your mouth that I am the healed of the Lord you receive it in the physical so you believe in your heart you speak with your mouth then you have what you say the Bible says you believe in your heart you are put right with God you confess with your mouth then you are saved what you speak with your mouth it brings your answer into the physical. So you ask God for a job. You believe you have the job. But you don't see it in the physical. Because you are not touching like you have it. You say, so God give me a job. After that, he said, I believe. But what you say with your mouth is opposite. If I ban, you are saying, I wonder if I'll get it. That's what causes the delay. You have to speak like you have. Remember the prayer of faith. You ask God once in prayer after that you thank him for the answer so you say God ask you for children ask you for husband or wife then after that you say Lord I thank you because you've given me the children even before you see them so you must speak are we together that's how you receive. You vocalize something. Make it clear in the physical and in the spiritual by speaking it. If you believe in your heart and say unto this mountain, be thou removed and you do not doubt in your heart, you shall have what you say. By your words, by your words, you shall be justified. By your words, you shall be condemned. The power of life and death is in your tongue. The Bible says your life you will be filled with what you speak with your mouth. So from today, you must mark your words. Because when you speak negative, you will get negative things in your life. But when you speak positive, that's what you will get. Because when I speak something, the spirit is listening. The Holy Spirit and the angels, they do them. Positive things. When you speak negative, the devil Satan and demons they perform them against you so when you speak 
against yourself. Saying I am cursed. I'm not moving anywhere. You are giving the devil authority. To close your doors even more. But if your doors are closed. And you speak opposite. And say I am moving forward. Doors are open for me. Then the spirit of God will work. To open doors for you. So don't speak what you see. Speak what you want to see. Do not complain about the darkness. You must speak the light that you want to see in your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number three. You believe. You speak. Then you act. You act like you have it. One lady had this teaching so she wanted to get a better job so she asked God for the job she declared that the job was hers and then she started acting every morning she would go to the gate of the new job and say Lord I thank you for my job then she would go to a previous job after one week she got that higher job another one wanted promotion so he applied for a promotion they denied the promotion so she, he started giving a tithe of the salary of that position he wanted. Three months down the line, the whole system was changed. He got that position for his sake. Everything changed for his sake. You must act your faith. You saw I was acting, just acting like I'm cutting. And things disappeared. It happens in every situation. When you start speaking and acting like you own a car, it will happen in the physical. Some people are like, he always speaks like a millionaire. He acts like one. But he has nothing. They are looking at the physical. The Bible says, the things that are physical, they are subject to change. They can change within a twinkling of an eye. Today you might be broke. Today, you you might be broke. Tomorrow you can wake up as a millionaire. As long as you act your faith and speak your faith, that's how you receive answers to pray. So, some people, why is it that your miracle is delaying? Because even though you prayed, you are silent. You are not speaking like you have received. If you are speaking, you are not acting. So your faith is not complete. You say, God, thank you for those children. You are speaking. Lord, I thank you for my kids that you've given to them. But there's no action. Now there must be action. Start sleeping with the clothes of pregnant women. Start buying the clothes for the children. That's what brings the spiritual into the physical faith and expectation. Are we together? So I want you to see why there's a delay in your life. It's not because you are cursed. As a child of God, you cannot be cursed. It's because your faith is not complete. You are not adding action to your faith. You're just saying, I believe God. But your voice. It's not confirming what you believe. If you are speaking like that, your action is not confirming. You say, I'm trusting God for that business deal. Then after that, you must speak like you have it. And start acting like it's yours. Start planning like you already have that deal. I'm still waiting. Don't you say see, I'm still waiting. those people who are like that, but they are like Thomas. Thomas. They believe after they see. But he said, now I believe because I've seen the Lord. Jesus said, blessed are those who believe without seeing. So you must start acting. That's how I move. 
By faith. If you do not move, if, if you don't take a step, you will wait forever. Are we together? So if you believe God and you speak and you act, you must praise. Learn to thank him for the answer in advance. Before we born. Don't thank him the day you see it. You must thank him before it comes. When there is a dead person, when I pray, I will say thank you that he is alive. When there is a sick person, I will say Lord, I thank you because they are healed. You thank him in advance. When I need finances, I said, Lord, I thank you because you've provided for me. You pray in the past tense. That's the prayer that brings the answer into the physical. Because in the spiritual realm, it's already done. So you must pray like that. Lord, I thank you because doors are open for me. Thank you for promotion that you have given to me. That's how you pray to receive answers. Not like God, will you ever hear me? That is unbelief, man. The Lord said, even before you pray, I will answer you. Even as you are praying, I will give you. From today, your prayers must be in faith. Faith gives praise to God. However, if when you pray, you ask always, God, please do this for me. Change it. If at all, and say, Lord, I thank you because you have done this for me. Even before you see it, you'll hear the testimonies you we'll get next week. week. Are we together? You say, God, I thank you because my child is serving you. He is faithful. He is righteous. Don't say it with your mouth. Don't chase your child. Say, oh God, just look at this dog. You will have what you say. If you say, my child is righteous, that's what will happen to them. Because the spirit of God will influence your child according to your faith. Are we together? Anytime I say, this church is so full, we don't, we don't even see people at the back there. Are you guys in the overflow? Can you see me in the overflow? What about the second overflow downstairs? Can you see me there? That is what I see. That is what I pray. That's what will be. But if you keep on saying, hey, what is it about? If you read the people as Babu, they're just lazy, they don't give, they're stingy. That's how people break down their churches. When I, when I started in Maseru, we took a wall that was almost this size. Just that. It was only about 40, 30 people. And I just say, we welcome everyone at the back. There was no one. But I kept on speaking it. Within one year and a half, we had three services. Packed. I mean, I was 23 years old. I was pastoring about 2,000 people a Sunday. That I started. Old people, older people. Why? Because faith, I call them. Let me show you how you call people by faith. Even in your business. How many of you are in business here? Let me tell you. Almost every time I talk to business people, they will tell you what they are going through. They will say business is okay. But now, it's quiet. Don't talk like that. You are speaking what you see. You must speak what you want to see. When God saw the darkness, he never said, ah, oh, 
Il dit only darkness in this world. Said, let there be light. And whatever you say will dominate the current situation. And it will change it. Even in your family. Dr. Yongi Cho his child died. He said the first hour he was praying negotiation prayers. He was saying God he's not even 10. Why don't you take me instead? After one hour nothing changed. He, he said second prayer he looked at the picture of Jesus now he's going to him directly looking at him. <laughs> One hour passed. <laughs> Nothing happened. Third hour. <laughs> he entered into faith. <laughs> he started calling the dead alive. <laughs> faith calls the dead alive. <laughs> it calls those things that be not as though they were. <laughs> you say my business is flourishing, <laughs> brother. <laughs> you say my ministry is exploding. <laughs> when you have only two people in the house because you don't speak what you see you speak what you want to see and the Holy Spirit will make it happen as he started calling the dead alive the Lord Jesus spoke to the child in heaven he said you must go back your father does not allow you to come and the child is still alive today faith when you pray by faith, you don't beg. How could you pray? Oh, God of offense. Faith, you accept what God has made you to be. I know I am a son. I am righteous before God. I have a right to receive answers. All that belongs to the Father. It belongs to me. I don't say to God, I'm just a worm. You know, some people they think they are humbling themselves. I'm just a worm. I'm nothing. You are not a worm. How is a book? The same glory that belongs to Jesus. That is God's presence. But it is given to you. The same love that the Father has for Jesus. He has for you. You are as much a son as much as Jesus is. So you must pray with your chest high and say, Lord, this is what I'm asking. And I thank you because I have received. That's how it happens. Are we together? Learn to thank him in advance. How do you call clients in your business? Let me show you. Are you a volunteer? Can I use you, brother? Just stand here. Just bring your hand. Uh, I also need somebody with an ID. I want somebody with an ID as well. You have your ID very close. Anyone? I want to demonstrate this. We are about to finish. Are you, are you enjoying the message? But we must apply it. Please, man. These things. These things. That the things you can see. I want to demonstrate the ID. These things that we are talking about, they are realities. We must apply them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go and practice them. For example, in the morning when you enter your business or your workplace, write down what you want to see and start speaking as though they're like that. Say, oh God, thank you that you've given me so many clients this week. What happens? Is that there will be a supernatural force that will bring them. I want to show you. Just bring it on. Right, just face that way. I want to show you how you call clients. I want to pull it. Eh? So, I hear about business or whatever. 
things are not coming your way, you must call them by faith. When you call them by faith, there's a force that will pull them. Eh? Now. 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 Lord, Father, thank you for clients that have come. Say, Father, thank you for that my child has come home. Then there will be a force that will be pulling them. But what about Serious. Some people will say, I don't know why I'm here. The more you persist and the more forceful you are, the quicker the manifestation. Now, 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 now. So the, the more persistent I am, the quicker it happens. Now, that, that happens, eh? That's how you bring clients. By faith, open doors. I've entered over 30 radios like that. For faith. Through faith. So learn to praise God for the answer in advance. Amen. Amen. Do not wait for the manifestation. Thank him before. Let your prayers be full of thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So please, I want to give you something practical for this week. Go and write down what you want to see in your life. How many of you need jobs here? This week, go and say, Father, as from today onwards, never ask God for a job again. Just say, Father, I thank you for the jobs that you have given to me. Amen? Amen. And then start speaking like it's true. If you were worrying and stressing, stop stressing and worry. Because you have the job. Start acting like you are working. Start planning like you are working. Are we together? Go and do that. For those who are already working, or those who are in business, Plan B. Plan a whole. Right now, I'm going to reopen my channel. Big project. And I'm going to put it there near Emmanuel TV. That is the most expensive platform. But you see, I don't move by what I see with my eyes. You keep on planning. Don't wait for money. Money will always full of faith. Are we together? Don't sit and say, ah, we don't have nothing. I said this service is going to be shooting live every Sunday. And Wednesday. And Friday. We're going to have guests from everywhere. That's why, that's why I know this call. It's going to be small, very, very soon. Just bring the, the vision paper, please. Bring the vision, not the vision, the membership form. 